You mentioned a minute ago you're from Oldham, um, you live in Oldham, and you want to run as an Oldham MP at the next general election. Oh, I will. I will do, Nick. Yeah. I mean, I was raised in Oldham. I moved to Oldham when I was a baby. My my parents, uh, the history of my family is very simple. I'm the product of a second marriage. My father was sent to go and fight in the Second World War. So his father sent the eldest son, as was the tradition, to uh, serve the empire. Uh, he walked from Sillet to Calcutta, got on a boat, served in the Navy, and the boat kicked him off in Liverpool and told him to make his own way home in 1944, 1945. So from then, uh, long story short, I was born in Bradford many years later, and my mum and dad wanted a better life for themselves. Instead of moving to Manchester or moving to Leeds, they moved to Oldham. So uh, from about three or four months old, up to my 40s, I lived in Oldham for a stint. I lived in Manchester, Nick, uh, not far from the train station because of the work I did, and also because I was... Uh, devising developing manchester's counter-terrorism strategy so that's you know that's a stint in manchester and at the moment i live in a small place called mosley which has a train station which is about a five minute walk into oldham my critics like to claim i'm not from oldham but anyone who is from oldham will happily tell you that i am from that town and that town is my is my home good tell me about oldham because obviously i know oldham i've been to oldham many times i've had friends who live in oldham well, these last 10 years, I would say the reputation of Oldham has taken quite a dive. Every time you read about Oldham now, it's about child sexual exploitation. It's about a corrupt council. You know, it was not that long ago where the leader of the council was connected to gangsters. She had a car fire bombed. It's just, it, it's as if it's a failing state. Am I, is that too hyperbolic? Am no, I just no, reading no, the no, bad no. press? No, no, no. I think, I think you know, let's be very clear here. Now, last week, Amanda Chatterton was defeated at the ballot box. She's the third Labour Party leader that has been defeated in succession. So it's the third party leader in just over two years. What Oldham has done, and it should be a warning to every town and city across our country, Nick, is Oldham has amplified everything that is wrong about identity politics and the way in which local government engages with communities and the way in which, in particular, the Labour Party has uh, weaponized uh, and divided one community against another. And that is essentially what Oldham is. It's, it's gangster politics played out in control of the council. So no longer do these gangsters control territories, such as Glodic or Westwood or Werneth, you know, these are some areas, but they have infiltrated the political landscape of the town. And to give you an example, Nick, and you talked about the firebombing of the car and stuff like that, the, the new leader we elected, her, well, the Labour Party selected her yesterday, is Arud Shah. We defeated her last year as the council leader in Chadderton South. She was put in to St Mary's, which is a Pakistani stronghold ward, to make sure she got elected. And within uh, hours, she became the next, the new leader of the council. This, this woman is infamous for her relationship. Yeah, she refers to him as a childhood friend, and, I, and I've not pried any further, and people's private lives aren't my business really, Nick, so I have intentionally have not pried any further. But the, uh, her, she has a clear connection with Dale Cregan. That's the cop killer, Dale Cregan. His getaway driver were this man called Irish Immy, and he has been hanging off her arm throughout the election campaign to the point where on Friday, Nick, this Friday, the county in Oldham wasn't on the Thursday night. It was on the Friday. For the third year in succession, he was at the count alongside his friend, Arud Shah. This is a mobster. This is a convicted heroin dealer. And to make matters worse, Nick, he was meant to be in court in the morning because he'd breached a restraining order against me. And when I spoke to the CPS in the morning for his trial, he hadn't turned up. So I'm, I pre, you know, he was found guilty. So I'm presuming at some point he turned up and went back to the count. I mean, this town, my town, has been infiltrated by mobsters. The political leadership of my town, the way in which decisions are made in this town, is now, you know, you can't tell the politicians from the you know, from the mobsters. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's staggering, you know, and, and this isn't me hyperboling or you hyperboling. These are the facts. 